Certain types of fractures, especially of the femur or the hip, can require placement of a special type of cast called a spica cast. In this video, we're going to talk about how to care for the spica cast and how to safely transport your child if they're in a spica cast. Hi, are you Emily's mom? I am. Hi, what's your name? Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. I'm Shay. I'm Emily's nurse. So she just came back from the operating room, and I know you've probably seen that she has this big cast on mm -hmm. um, that goes all the way up to her chest area, and this thing is called a spica cast. Okay. Um, it, it might look a little bit scary, um, but I'm going to teach you how to take care of it, and you're going to feel a lot more comfortable whenever we are done with this. Um, so one of the um, first things I want you to know about is that it's super important that we keep the cast clean and dry. Okay. Um, so that's why I have this big t-shirt on over her um, because that's going to help cover up the cast and keep her from spilling things on it or getting food down in here, putting anything down inside of the cast. Um, it also helps because the sides of this cast, if you want to feel are really rough. So we don't want her little arms rubbing on the side of the cast because they can actually get some abrasions and skin breakdown right there. Okay. We don't want that to happen. So when the shirt is on over that, it protects her little arms. The next thing that you are probably wondering about is um, this um, mole skin that's on here. This is just a real soft material that we use on the cast that kind of helps protect their skin a little bit more. So if you want to feel, the edges of the cast are normally kind of sharp yeah. um, and we don't want them to get any sort of skin breakdown from those rough edges of the cast. Okay. So we're going to put these little flaps of mole skin around all of those rough areas including the top of the cast, um, the little belly hole that's cut out here, around the entire diaper area, and then also around her feet. Okay. And that's just gonna help protect her, her skin right there. The next part that we're gonna go over is actually doing the diapering. So when you have one of these casts, it's gonna be really important to make sure that they don't get any urine or any poop inside of that cast. We have to keep it really clean. Okay. And we have a lot of different things that we're gonna to use to make sure this does stay clean. So one of the things that we're gonna need is some of the moleskin. This is a big can that we're gonna send home with you and it's all just rolled up inside. This is just what it looks like. It's a smaller piece that's already been cut. So you can see it's just that nice, okay. soft brown material. The back side of it is like a sticker. So when you cut that, you can then peel the sticker part off and it's okay. sticky okay. and that sticks to the cast. Then to cut that moleskin, we're gonna send you home with a big pair of scissors to cut that. And then we also need just some clear plastic tape. Okay. Then we have three different size diapers. Okay. So we're going to, on Emily, use some newborn size diapers. And these are gonna be the smallest ones that we're gonna have on first. So they're gonna protect the edges of the cast. And then we're going to use a bigger size infant diaper. This is just a size three. And that's actually gonna go on her more like a regular diaper. And then we also have some small adult diapers. And these are gonna end up being wrapped around the outside of the cast to kind of just hold everything else on. Okay, so those are all the supplies you need and then we'll go step by step and I'll show you how you actually take care of that diaper area. Okay, sounds great. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to take care of the spica cast. So the first part is um, we are gonna have to pedal all of the rough edges. So by pedaling, that just means that we're gonna take the strips of moleskin and they are cut into little small pieces 
that are rounded on one side and they're flat on the other side. And we call these petals because once you put them on the cast, it almost looks like a flower petal. So do they the do I get to take them home cut like that or will I be cutting them? We are going to send you home with some that are already pre-cut okay. in a little Ziploc bag and then I'm going to show you how you cut more okay. because you'll probably have to do more once you get home. So your mole skin comes in a big can and inside this can is a big piece of mole skin. Now we don't need all this right now, so we're gonna cut it down so it's a little bit easier to handle. Just cut a smaller piece, okay. about like that. And then we're gonna fold it in half, like this. And then just cut so we have two long strips, like this. Now, we're just gonna start with one of them. Now, this is the part where we're gonna cut those little petal-shaped pieces. So we're just gonna start at one side and cut a piece with our scissors. It kinda looks like this. Okay, okay I'm gonna let you try. Okay. Very good. Now that our petals are cut, we're going to apply the petals to the cast. So we're going to want to petal all the rough edges of the cast, um, around the feet, around the diaper area, the tummy hole, and then around the chest and all these front and back. So all those rough edges are done. Now, we're gonna start with doing the diaper area. So you're just going to take one of your petals of moleskin and you kinda have to use your fingernail and get that backing off. Okay. And then you can peel it back. Take the backing off. So now we just have the sticky part. And we are going to <clears throat> put it onto the cast like this. And then you want to fold it up and under, and then just take your fingers and press it onto the inside of the cast. There's a cottony material right here, and you want it stuck onto the inside of that and make sure that it's not sticking to the skin. Okay. So you just stick your fingers in there. So you actually stick it to this cotton part mm -hmm. inside. Okay. And then you'll take the outside part and smooth that down to stick it to the cast. Okay. We want to overlap the petal just a little bit to make sure that the skin is very protected and all of those rough edges are cut. So we overlap just a little bit. And again, we're going to tuck it inside of the cast Use your fingers to stick it on the cotton on the inside. Make sure it's not on their skin. And then smooth it down on top of the cast. Okay. Now I'm gonna let you try one. Okay. So just against this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, overlap just a little bit. Very good. There we go, and then there we go. Make sure it's not stuck to the skin on the inside and then smooth it down. Perfect. So we're gonna do this entire diaper area. So now that we've done the front side, we're gonna flip Emily over so that we can pedal the back side. Okay. So you wanna be very careful whenever you are turning her over. Um, you want to make sure that you lift her up and turn her while she's lifted. So we're gonna use the pillow to position her when we flip her onto her stomach. So I'm going to pick her up 
turn her over and then I might need you to kind of help position her with the pillow. Okay. So we're going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to flip. Oh, there we go. It's okay, Emily. And then we want to position so her tummy is on the pillow like that and make sure her little head is turned to the side. So now we're going to do the same thing on the back and we're going to pedal the entire diaper area on the back. Okay. So since you're a pro at this now, I'm going to let you pedal this side and I'll pedal this side. I'll get this one. I can see it a little bit better. Okay. Very good. We're pedaled. Next, we are going to start the diapering process. So you're going to need three different size diapers. We're going to have the newborn size diapers first, then the size three diapers, okay. and then after that, the large um, adult size diaper. Okay. So the first part is we are going to take the newborn size diapers and we're going to cut them right across the middle with our scissors. We're just going to cut across here so that we've got two halves. Okay. Then, you know how diapers have that stuff yeah. inside? We don't want this falling out and getting inside of the diaper. So we're going to have to take some of our tape and we're just going to seal the cut edge with a strip of tape about that long. Okay. So we just put it over that cut edge and then fold it over, press it down. Okay. Now there's no pellets coming out. So the next part is we are just going to take these little tabs off because we don't need these on here. There's Velcro and you don't want that rubbing on your um, on your skin. So we just, you can peel them off like that or take your scissors and just cut it with scissors. Okay. And just throw those away. Okay, so now we're going to have a big pile of these cut diapers. Now we're going to put the diapers onto the cast. So this part sounds a little weird, but this is the way that you want to do it. You're going to take the diaper and put the absorbent side, this side, facing upwards. Okay. Hang with me. It sounds strange, but it'll make sense in a minute. Okay. So we're going to put it on like this with that absorbent side out. Okay. You also want to make sure that the taped edge is on the outside of the diaper like this. Then, just like we did the petals where we tuck them inside the cast, we're going to do the same thing with the diaper. So you're just going to take it and get it inside of the cast as far as you can get it. And make sure it's not wadded up and that it's very smooth in there. Like that. And then you can take another piece of the plastic tape and you can use that to tape that diaper onto the outside of the cast just to hold it on a little bit better. Okay. Just like we overlapped our petals just a little bit, we're going to overlap the diapers just a little bit in the exact same way. So again, we're going to do the absorbent side 
that's the outside, absorbent side facing up. We're going to overlap just a little bit. Make sure your tape is on the outside of the cast and we're going to tuck it in. And secure it to the cast. Very good. You got the absorbent side out and the tape on the outside. Overlapped it a little and tuck it in as far as you can get it. Does that look good? Perfect. And then we tape it down. So hopefully these diapers are just going to be extra protection for our cast. We don't really want these to get wet. They're there just in case the other diaper leaks. So this is just a size three diaper that we're going to use on Emily. And again, we're going to take off the tabs on these diapers because we don't want that Velcro irritating her skin. Now this is going to go on her bottom more like a regular diaper. So we're going to take it and it's going to go inside the cast as far as we can get it up the top part here. And then we also want to tuck it in on the sides like this. And then when we flip her over, we'll tuck it in on the front part. Okay. Now we're going to take a small adult size diaper. This one looks really big compared to those little newborn ones. And this is going to go on the outside of the cast. And this really shouldn't catch anything. It's more just to hold all the other diapers in place. Now we're going to flip her over and we're going to do the cut half diapers on the front side and then we'll tuck the other diaper in on the front and then we'll secure this and we'll be done. So when you turn, you want to grab Emily down here at the bottom of her cast because it's really heavy. So you want to make sure you've got a good grip on the cast itself and then just take the other hand and you can kind of put it on her shoulders and you're going to kind of pick her up and then turn her and then set her back down. Okay. So a hand here and then here, do I turn mm -hmm. her? Whichever way is more comfortable for you. There you go. Yes. Perfect. Flip and then set her down. Very good. And turn our little head back. All right. So you did a great job flipping her over and then um, you've already put on those cut half diapers on the front and you did a great job. That's perfect. Now we're going to take that um, inside diaper, the size three one that's a little bit bigger than those half cut diapers. And just like we did on the back, I want you to kind of tuck it into the front and on the sides to make sure that that's really close against her skin. Okay. And get as far into the, the front and upwards as you can. This part. There go. Yeah. It's a little bit big, I think. Here we go. Okay. And after we do all that, now we're just going to take the large adult diaper and this is just going to go on like a regular diaper does. If the edges are a little bit big, you can fold those under. And this is just going to help hold on all those small diapers that we put on the inside. And then you can fasten the Velcro on these. Okay, Emily's ready to play. 
this cast demonstrates a spica cast that's a little bit different than Emily's. Emily's did not have a stabilization bar. As you can see, this cast has a bar that goes between the legs and this is used to stabilize the cast. This is not to be used to lift or turn the patient in any way. It just makes the cast a little bit stronger. So do we have to do all these steps every time we change her diaper or every time she goes to the bathroom? No, you don't. So you do want to try to check her to see if she's wet or if she's had a bowel movement um, about every two hours during the day. And then you can go about every three to four hours at night, but you will need to wake up during the night probably at least once to check her and make sure she's not wet. Okay. So when you check her, You'll just undo the tabs on that outside diaper and we can just pull that down. Then hopefully we can just pull out this one inside diaper and pull that out and hopefully all of the the PP will be on this diaper. Okay. So then we will just get a new one. And just like we did before, we're going to put that diaper back against her skin, tuck it in on the sides, tuck it in on the back, and then you can put this back up and you're done. Okay. Now, if it gets wet underneath this diaper, if you check her and you see that these are wet or soiled, these will have to be removed. If they're not wet or soiled, you can leave those on there all day long. So they would only have to be changed once a day. But if these are wet, you would just need to peel the tape off and pull off those wet half diapers. And then you would get new ones and tuck those back in, tape them back on. Okay. And then you would take that inside diaper. Once your half diapers are on, tuck it all back inside, then you would be done. Will we need to flip her over just to change this? You might too? need to, yes. Yes, to get that done. Now, <clears throat> what we don't want to happen is if we peel these half diapers off and we find out that the petals of moleskin are wet, those will also, also have to come off. So then we would have to remove all those petals that we had placed on there. And that was the part that took a long time. So you don't want those to get wet. So if we peel those off, ooh, it's really sticky. If those were wet, you then need to look inside of here in that cottony material. This is called web reel. It's like cotton balls inside the cast. If that is wet, you can't leave it that way. So if it's wet, you need to get some washcloths and you would have to put that inside your cast and try to squeeze out as much of that moisture as you can. And get all that away from her skin. Then once you get all of that out that you can with the washcloths. Do you have a hair dryer yes. at your house? You would need to get a hair dryer on the cool setting, not the warm, not the hot. It needs to have that cool setting on it. And you need to blow dry the cottony material until your cast is dry. If it stays wet, it can start falling apart. It can get really soft and it's not gonna hold the leg in place like it should. So if this part gets wet, I'll use the washcloths to try to get it dry and then I'll use the hair dryer on a cool setting. Um, is there anything else that I should do if this part gets wet? You do also need to call the, the ortho clinic and let them know that it's gotten wet um, because sometimes it can cause the, um, the cast to start getting soft and breaking down. Okay. Um, also, if it's wet, you need to watch them very closely because they can get skin breakdown from that urine sitting on their skin. They can start getting rashes and things like that. So you okay. have to be very careful about making sure that it gets cleaned off and is dried.
you showed me how to change the diaper and how to take care of that. What about giving her baths and how do I keep her from getting bored and what am I going to do with her for these six weeks? <laughs> Those are all really good questions. So she will not be able to have a tub bath as long as she has the spica cast on. Okay. So you will need to just sponge bathe her. So you'll be able to um, you know, clean her chest area, around her neck, um, clean her face, kind of sponge bath, get her hair washed, um, get the arms, hands, of course, they're going to be sticky and dirty, so you can wash those hands really good, and you can wash her feet really good, okay. but the rest of her, um, you're not going to be able to wash while she's in this spica cast. Okay. Um, you also need to make sure that we cover her up with that shirt. We talked about that at the beginning, um, just because you don't want their arms rubbing on there um, and getting abrasions. You also don't want them dropping food down inside of the cast. Sometimes kids also get a little bit curious. Um, and sometimes they might put small toys or other items inside the top of the cast. And we don't want that to happen because they can get little pressure wounds inside of here from that pressing on their skin. So if okay. you keep it covered up, it helps keep the cast nice and clean and dry. Also kind of prevents them from wanting to put things down in there. Okay. Um, a lot of kids too will have issues with itching when they're in a cast, especially during the warmer months, they'll get a little bit um, itchy, almost like a heat rash kind of a situation. Um, you want to make sure that you don't let her stick anything down inside the cast to scratch and you don't need to stick anything in there. Okay. Um, no popsicle sticks or clothes hangers or even scratching with fingers. Okay. Um, if you did that, you can also cause little abrasions, little scratches inside of that cast and it can get infected. And if it's infected under that cast, we don't know that. So we don't want that to happen. Okay. So she is itchy. You can get that hair dryer just like we were going to use um, if the cast got wet and you can blow that cold air on her and sometimes that coolness will help with the itching. Okay. Um, also when you're positioning her um, you want to make sure that her body is well supported. So you can use pillows to prop her up a little bit. Um, if you wanted her to be able to you know, watch TV you can prop up a couple of pillows so she's sitting a little bit more upright. Okay. Um, a lot of times people will get those little um, like bed tables that you could have like breakfast in bed on that have the little legs on them and you can put those over Emily and she can sit here and color, draw, play with toys on that while she's okay. sitting in the floor propped up on those little pillows. You also want to make sure if she is laying down on her back See how her little legs are up in the air? They're gonna be like that just because of the way the cast is formed. So you wanna make sure you support her little legs. And you can do that by taking blankets or towels, anything like that, and just kind of supporting her little legs with those if the pillows are too big and let her have that support. She can also roll onto her side. She doesn't have to stay on her back all the time. I already showed you what it was like when we flipped her onto her tummy and how to position her on a pillow, but also you can roll her onto her side and you can take pillows or blankets and use those to prop her up on her side. And again, we have this leg kind of hanging out there in the air. So you could take more pillows or you could take a couple of blankets and prop those up so that they're underneath her leg like that and supporting that leg that's up in the air. And a lot of people will use um, wagons. If you have a wagon at home or you have a friend that has a wagon that you can borrow while she's in her cast, you can prop them up in a wagon with your pillows behind them, just like that. And you can prop up pillows or blankets underneath her legs. And you guys can go to the mall like that. You can take her to an outing at the zoo. Um, you know, take her to the park just to get her out of the house. She doesn't have to be confined to staying in the house while she's in a spica cast. And um, some strollers also will, um, if they're large enough, they have the little tray that you can lift or remove on the front of the stroller. And some of those are wide enough that it will allow you to put her even in a stroller and take her places in a stroller.
You've just seen Shay demonstrate to mom how to take care of Emily's spica cast. Oftentimes when kids have a spica cast, they can't be safely transported in a car in just a standard car seat. So now Amanda is gonna to talk to you about some of the issues about how to safely transport a child in a vehicle when they have a spica cast. This is a car seat specifically designed for children in spica cast because it has low sides to accommodate wider cast. And it also has this, what we call a hammock, to position Emily and just kind of help her sit since she's not able to sit fully upright. So just as with any car seat, we wanna make sure that it is nice and snug. And because Emily is small and rear facing, we want the straps to be at or below her shoulders. And we're gonna want this chest clip to be as close as we can get it to her armpit level. Sometimes with spica cast, it may be a little tricky just to get it as, just to get it how we need it. Um, sometimes it will fit a little high and if you get it too high, it'll be close around the child's neck. So if you must, you can have it a, a small amount lower than you need, but ideally we get it close to the armpit level just as with any car seat. So this car seat, as you notice, many car seats will have a tightening factor right here so you can tighten the harness. This seat tightens on the side of each hip. And the reason for that is that one leg may be casted and one may not, so it just allows for a better fit for the child. So as you can see, Emily is rear facing. Ideally, we would like children to remain rear facing at least until the age of two or beyond if they are not in a spica seat. And if they are in a spica cast, we would like them to remain rear facing as long as possible as well. However, sometimes children are not able to fit rear facing with a spica cast up until the age of two years. If that is the case, this seat also, with some modifications, can be adapted to turn forward facing for older children. On another note, the car seat that you have may look a little bit differently than the one that Emily is, is in. You should always be provided with the car seat manual if you're provided a loaner so that you may consult that for the proper use of that seat. Mm -hmm.